hook up the System 6 timer to either the wall plate or I will hook it up to a uh, cable harness in order to run down and make sure that all the wiring from the System 6 to the uh, individual lanes is working correctly. You notice here to the right of the screen, uh, right of the System 6 screen, I've got a uh, simulated scoreboard up and running. So what that's going to do is kind of give us a, a visual clue just like in the real world of, of how our, our lanes are functioning. So I've got it set up on a, I'm going to set it, set the timer up to a 50 yard race so that I can go down and, and hit each button and just get a finish. I don't have to do splits and, and all that fun stuff. So I'm going to start up the race. I'm using one of our training keypads but you can easily do this by just using a, uh, a push button or if you have a banana plug that's got a shorting wire across the two poles you can use that as well. So I'm going to start the race and notice that we've got the running time up there both in the upper left of the System 6 screen and then also on the scoreboard. Notice also that down in the lane in the status of the lanes they're all showing as finished armed. So it's expecting a finish at this point. What I usually do assuming that I'm the only one doing the testing uh, I will actually go down to each lane and I'll hit the backup button first or buttons. In this case I just have the training keypad which simulates button A and a touchpad. So I'm going to hit lane 1 backup button first and you notice it puts the dashes up on the scoreboard. It tells me that button is functioning correctly. At this point I'll hit the touchpad with a uh, either a shorter banana plug or a push button like I said and now I get a finish time up there. It tells me both of those are working and I'll literally just run down the line testing each one of them to make sure that I get a button and the touchpad coming through. So once I'm done, notice I'm waiting for the dashes and I get the dashes on each, each after I get the dashes I then hit the touchpad to verify that I've got a connection this point if you look on the system 6 screen you'll notice that the running time went away all eight lanes have, have shown up as finished however I have a race number down here but it does not say stored because I'm not done with the system at this point what I now need to do is I need to hit the store print button and you'll notice it'll pop up a screen and all of the backup times are going to have parentheses around them. This is the System 6's visual clue to say, hey, take a look at these lanes. Something's up because the backup time is so f different than the push button time. Just another little visual clue for you to, to, to verify. If all of these backup times came within the 0.31 seconds we talked about during the setups uh, video, you'll, you would not see the screen at all. It would just go right on to the, it would just go right on to showing the reset in the upper left hand corner. If this were an actual race and let's say lane one um, this was an, an, as an incorrect time and I really wanted to use the backup time I can actually come over here and just click on the soft key next to this use lane one backup. If for whatever reason all of the backups uh, were the actual finish time I wanted I can use the all, use all flagged backups. Notice if I hit the use lane one backup it changes the uh, race time it also updates the scoreboard uh, however it does put an asterisk next to it so when it goes over to meet manager at that point that file will be denoted or that lane time will be denoted that it is a backup time and not an actual uh, touchpad time once I'm satisfied with that I can hit quit notice I still don't have the reset showing in the upper left hand corner of the screen I hit the two reset buttons and we're good to go on to the next race what we're going to do here is we're going to actually go through and simulate a number of races uh, that and, and kind of highlight the things that can can typically happen during a race that you want to watch for things that you want to, and how to correct those issues. One of the the first one we'll go over is we'll run a 50 yard race um, and I will turn off the display for lane one um, and as if there was no swimmer in that lane. Notice the scoreboard also blanks out that particular line. What we're going to do here is run the full race. Uh, we'll actually, uh, I'll simulate that we get touch pads and, and buttons for lane one, but we'll go on the assumption that there was no swimmer in lane one, only to realize at the very end that uh, there was indeed a swimmer there. 
So I'm going to go ahead and start this race, uh, and as soon as the pads go armed, we'll actually go ahead and, and finish off this race. I'm going to start with the backup and touchpad for lane one. Notice nothing showed up on the display here under under lane one. As I do lane two, three, two through eight, all that data will actually show up. I get all the backup times and I get all the touchpad times, but it does not show anything for lane one. At this point, if I had hit, I can hit the store print button thinking I'm okay, only to realize that I've actually got a swimmer in lane one. At that point, I can turn on the lane and all of the data is still there. Provided I don't hit the two reset keys, any of that is valid. So I'm going to go ahead and hit reset and we'll finalize that race. Notice that it stores race 003. That is the race number that we just finished. And all of our times are back up. Now, I'm going to move on to the next scenario, which is I get a backup time, but I don't get a touchpad time. Keep in mind, in order to finish off a race, I have to have one of two things happen. I have to have either a touchpad time or a backup time, or I guess the third scenario would be I have both, uh, in order to finish off the race in the timer. So if I don't have a touchpad and a backup, I either have, I have to make a decision. I either have to holler out to somebody to hit the button or hit the pad for that particular lane, or I have to turn that lane off and then rectify the situation in the meet man on the meet manager side with the backup times. But let's go on the assumption, let's go off this first scenario that we get a backup time, but we don't get a touchpad time. So let's go ahead and start another race. Notice that this red box shows up down here in the bottom right hand corner saying this heat has already been used. I did not advance the next heat button so I am still showing event one heat three as in the previous race. However, you're okay from the standpoint that it is still the correct race. It, it has its own unique race number. So it's not too big of an issue. Once I see that, what I usually end up doing is just going ahead and advancing it to the correct heat at that point. And I can do that while the race is running without any issue. So the race is up and running. I'm going to come down in lane one. I'm going to get only a backup time, but no touchpad. The rest of them I'm going to get touchpad and backup times. So at this point notice that I the reset is not showing up because I haven't hit the reset button. <clears throat> Lane 1 is still showing up as finish arm because I don't have a touchpad time that has come in. However, the running time has gone away because one of the scenarios for that lane has been satisfied. In other words, I have a backup time. If I hit the store print button at this time, I'm able to finalize the race. However, it brings up the screen and it highlights basically that lane one has an issue. I don't have a touchpad time, I just have a backup time. So if I click on the use lane one backup, now the race is done and I'm able to reset the race. If I hadn't done that, I can't reset it until I get some time in there. Either I manually enter it or I use the backup time, which is the, the case that you normally should do. Once I've done that, I can hit the quit screen or quit button and do the reset and we're good to go. Notice the asterisk next to it as it goes over to meet manager it will be flagged showing that indeed that was not a touchpad time but a backup time that for that particular lane. It still ranks them uh, as in, in, in order of their place as they would have come in based on that backup time. We've already dealt with the scenario where we get the uh, we had inadvertently turned off a lane when there actually was a swimmer there and how we deal with that. We also dealt with the fact of uh, we missed a touch at the very uh, finish of the of the race, but we had a backup time and how we addressed that. Another common scenario that you'll run into is on a longer distance race where a swimmer will miss a split. And what we'll do, I'm running a hundred here, so as it comes down. Once the pad delay at start expires, I've shown so that the lanes are armed, meaning that the timer is expecting a split, touchpad only. So as they come down, lane two misses their split. So what we can do here at this point, I can either hit the plus touch button and enter the lane, or I can do a finish arm for that particular lane on the keypad. So I go under the column for lane two and I hit finish arm and now we're good to go. No split will be recorded obviously, they missed the touch but we will get the finish. So as it comes down everything is good 
and there all the data is recorded. I hit store print. I verify all the times are correct. I hit reset and we're good to go on to the next race. Now that next scenario is where let's say we're doing a flyover and the swimmer that's in the water takes too long to get out of the water and inadvertently hits the touch pad and we get an extra touch. So the race starts and right off the bat, right after the pad is armed, we get a touch on lane one. Now obviously that's not their split in four minutes or four seconds and and some change. So what we can do here is I can either minus touch and enter the lane number or I can do a split arm for that particular lane and it will take that split away. Notice, notice it does go, uh, instead of going back to zero, it goes to one, but at the first actual split it will catch up. So I'm going to give them all a split here. And the timer now, this, the lane status now changes to finish lap. All the splits are in for that first and we're going to go on to the finish lap. So now once the pad delay at split expires, which I believe we had it set as 15 seconds, the display will then change to finish armed. Uh, if we're outside the time uh, from the first split, we're going to get then the warning messages show up or the warning uh, color will change on the on the lane number here. So now as we come down we can actually give them a finish Now notice I did not enter a backup time under lane one. No problem. Notice the running time went away, meaning that all the criteria for all the lanes has been met um, that we are good to go. So if I hit start print, although no backup time, it is still considered an official time. The next scenario I want to cover is if we had inadvertently put in the wrong race length for this and how we uh, how we correct that. Now there's two ways that can happen is that the race length of that is down here let's say this 100 is actually the the actual length length of the race is shorter let's say it was supposed to be a 50 we have it set up as a hundred so when we come down here and we get going instead of going finish armed immediately it goes armed remember we're gonna we're simulating that we want a fit we're actually looking at a 50 yard race and I've got it set up as a hundred yard race so when I come down I'm going to actually hit touchpad and backup button for each of the lanes. I realize my mistake when I hit the store print button, nothing happens. So if I change it to a 50 at that point via the uh, soft key over here, it immediately takes away the running time and the race is finished. I can hit store print, hit reset, and there you go. The only downside to this is that you don't have a backup time. Um, in the case when you're you're set up for a longer distance than is the actual race, the timer sees that uh, backup button come in as an uh, relay exchange, and it won't record the backup. However, all the touch pads are, have been recorded, so we have no issue. The next race, let's go from from the standpoint that I have it set up as a 50, and when in reality it's actually a 100 yard race. So we come down and it's immediately finish arm, which should be your clue, but things can happen and you don't realize that. So everybody comes down and they get what looks to be finish times. You expect the swimmers to stop, they actually turn and keep going. At this point, before hitting, I can actually hit the store print button, but I can actually, before hitting the resets, if I change it back to 100, notice that it takes away the backups and then rearms all the pads so we're ready to go. At this point I can get my finish times and backup times in and everything is good. That other scenario if I had indeed actually hit the store print key I'll change it back to a 50 here. So let's just so simulate that and show you I'm going to come down as if everybody has finished. I'm assuming that everybody's finished, even got a backup time. I hit the store print key. Notice it changes to race 005 stored. But now I realize it was actually 100, and it takes everything back away. The backups go off, and we're still good to go. 
Remember, as long as I don't hit the two reset keys, I'm still live and all that data is still there. So now the race will come down and they actually finish and I get all my data.